Welcome. This is the study of straight line motion in honors physics. Having just spent some time looking at the tools of physics, proportions, graphing, graph straightening, such topics as that. So now we enter into the basics of motion. And let me make the disclaimer as I'm recording this first presentation. I'm very sick. I have almost no voice. <clears throat> Hopefully this will be somewhat intelligible. You'll have to bear with me. Position is where an object is from a reference point. So if my reference point is right here, I could go forward one unit, two units, and I'm at position two units, whatever they are. Nothing spectacular about that. The symbol for horizontal, one-dimensional position is X, and vertical, you guessed it, is Y. Now displacement, what's displacement? Simply a change in position. So we could start right here and go to one unit, position one, and then from there we could go two more forward and one back and our displacement is one while our position is two. We started at one, we went forward two, back one. So position two, displacement one. If I start here, go forward two, back two, our displacement is zero. Okay, what does it include? Magnitude and direction. <coughs> We talk about it in terms of plus or minus x and plus or minus y in two dimensions. So that's pretty logical. It's independent of the reference position. So if I start here and I go two units forward and one unit backwards, my displacement is one. If I start down here, on the other hand, a different place altogether, or let me start over in this corner, and I go two units forward and one backward, my displacement is one. It's the same thing. It doesn't matter where I start. That's all that's referring to. <clears throat> Symbol and formula. Displacement is delta x. x minus x zero. This delta means change. Change is final minus initial. We could express this a different way. We could say x is equal to x zero plus d. Where I am is where I was, the initial position, plus the displacement. So what is our x? Let's say we start at 1. There's position 1 unit. We go 2 in the plus x direction. Then the final position is 3. Okay, common units. The metric system, SI system, meters, kilograms, seconds. That's what that stands for. The British system, which is the one that we use commonly in this country, the FPS system, feet, pound second. Now I'll just make the comment that we in the United States are officially under the MKS system, but we have chosen to ignore that. So we're still using the British system. And I will admit that I find it a little more um, intuitive in terms of my perception of spatial dimensions and whatnot and volumes in everyday life because I've used it all my life. But we still tend to teach science using the MKS system because that's what the rest of the world is doing. Eventually, probably, we in the United States will catch up. <clears throat> Distance traveled. Total length of the path. No concern about the direction. So here I am. I'm starting here. I go one unit forward, two units backward. The displacement you should recognize as negative one. The distance traveled was, well, two units, one, one unit forward, two units backward. The, the distance was three, while the displacement is negative one. So you can see that there's a big difference between those two. Total distance, you just add up all the individual legs of a particular path. Velocity, displacement in a certain amount of elapsed time. So V average, average velocity, displacement over time, delta x over delta t. So that's x minus x zero. Again, if I didn't mention it before, x is simply the, the final position. x zero is the initial position. Variations would be f for final, i for initial, 
two for the second one, one for the first one. They all mean the same thing. So divided by t. Use of variation of this is position is initial position plus average velocity times time. That tells you where you are right now. Where you were plus the velocity times time gives you the new position. Average speed, total distance traveled divided by the total elapsed time. That's what we mean by average speed. And so now we define acceleration. What is acceleration? All of you have some kind of concept of it. And the most simplistic and straightforward start to that understanding, you would probably insert the word, or the two words, speeding up. And that's pretty good. Likewise, slowing down has a very similar expression associated with it. It's called deceleration. So slowing down and speeding up, <clears throat> which is really a pretty good start. But in high school, we will have a little bit deeper understanding of the consequences of acceleration. Moreover, sometimes you're accelerating and your brain may tell you that you're not accelerating, but your body will overcome your brain's misconceptions. And in particular, what I'm talking about, your body always knows that you're accelerating because it experiences what we call G-force. When you're experiencing G-force, it means you are accelerating, even if in your cognitive analysis of the situation, you may conclude that in fact you're not acceleration, accelerating. So we will <clears throat> undertake those investigations. And you'll see what I mean as time goes on. Well, what is acceleration? It's a change in velocity. And a change in velocity always occurs in an interval of time. So we'll say in, a, in an elapsed time. Any time there's a change in velocity, you by definition have an acceleration. So symbol and formula, we'll clarify that. A is delta V over T. It's the most fundamental different definition of acceleration. Change in velocity over time. We could express that as final minus initial. And a useful variation is that V, the final velocity, is the velocity you were going <coughs> plus acceleration times time. This turns out to be a, a really useful and oft used expression in basic problem solving. What about the units? Well, we've already discussed the units for velocity. We had meters per second. The rate of change of position. And it's just the rate at which that changes. So we have the time rate of change in position. Change in position per second. Per second. So it's the time rate of change of the time rate of change in position. Now, is this sounding complicated? I don't want to overly do it, overly complicate it. But it's important to think through what it really means. We can express it in terms of the unit meters per second squared. Mathematically, that's how it turns out. Meters per second per second. So what it's really telling us is how much the velocity changes every unit of time, typically seconds. <laughs> now, a very important special case is constant acceleration. And you can probably recognize that a constant acceleration just simply means that the velocity changes and it would do so at a constant rate. Anything that changes uniformly over a period of time. The average value is the value that occurs in the middle of the time interval of that particular situation. So maybe I'm situated right here and a uniformly increased speed. Can't really show that my cursor here very well, the virtual laser pointer. But you start off slow and you go faster and faster and faster. So say going across the speed, going across the screen, we we navigate that in say four seconds. We start it, we're starting at zero meters per second, and we we end up at four meters per second at the other side. And let's say it takes two seconds. Well, the average velocity in that situation is going to be somewhere, obviously, between 0 and 4. And 
it's actually the value that occurs in the time midpoint. Now the time midpoint is one second because it took two seconds to do that. And so in one second, it's going two meters per second. In the next second, it's going four meters per second. So really we have two meters per second per second. The acceleration is two meters per second squared. Hopefully that initial ex example made a little bit of sense. So in this case of constant acceleration, we have average velocity <coughs> is the initial plus final divided by two. So in the case we just looked at, zero, that was V1, four, that was V2, divided by two, that's two. So your average velocity was two meters per second and we were accelerating at two meters per second every second, two meters per second squared. It's also V0 plus V over two, just another way to express it. And in the next video now, we will look at this graphically and how that, how that will, um, that should give us a better understanding of actually plotting these motions, which we will be doing with position, velocity, and acceleration as time goes on.